Hello, this is Matthew with Simply Learn, and today we're going to go through and introduce you to DevOps. We're going to go through a number of key elements today. The first two will be reviewing models that you're already probably using for delivering solutions into your company. And the most popular one is Waterfall followed by Agile. Then we'll look at DevOps and how DevOps differs from the two models and how it also borrows and leverages the best of those models. We'll go through each of the phases that are used in typical DevOps delivery and then the tools used within those phases to really improve the efficiencies within DevOps. Finally, we'll summarize the advantages that DevOps brings to you and your teams. So let's go through Waterfall. So Waterfall is a traditional delivery model that's been used for many decades for delivering solutions, not just IT solutions and digital solutions, but even way before that. It has its history that goes back to World War II. So Waterfall is a model that is used to capture requirements and then cascade each key deliverable through a series of different stage gates that is used for building out the solution. So let's take you through each of those stage gates. The first that you may have done is requirements analysis. And this is where you sit down with the actual client and you understand specifically what they actually do and what they're looking for in the software that you're going to build. And then from that requirements analysis, you'll build out a project plan. So you have an understanding of what the level of work is needed to be able to be successful in delivering the solution. After that, you've got your plan, then you start doing the development. And that means that the programmers start coding out their solution. They build out their applications, they build out the websites. And this can take weeks or even months to actually do all the work. When you've done your coding and development, then you send it to another group that does testing and they'll do full regression testing of your application against the systems and databases that integrate with your application. You'll test it against uh, the actual code. You'll do manual testing. You do UI testing. And then after you've delivered the solution, you go into maintenance mode, which is just kind of making sure that the application keeps working. If there's any security risks that you address those security risks. The problem you have, though, is that there are some challenges, however, that you have with the waterfall model. The cascading deliveries and those complete and separated stage gates means that it's very difficult for any new requirements from the client to be integrated into the project. So if a client comes back and it's, the project has been running for six months and they've gone, hey, we need to change something. That means that we have to almost restart the whole project. It's very expensive and it's very time consuming. Also, if you spend weeks and months away from your client and you deliver a solution that they are only just going to see after you spend a lot of time working on it, they could be pointing out things that are in the actual final application that they don't want or are not implemented correctly or lead to just general unhappiness. The challenge you then have is if you want to add back in the client's feedback to restart the whole waterfall cycle again. So the client will come back to you with a list of changes and then you go back and you have to start your programming and you have to then start your testing process again. And just you're really adding in lots of additional time into the project. So using the waterfall model, companies have soon come to realize that, you know, the clients just aren't able to get their feedback in quickly, effectively. It's very expensive to make changes once the teams have started working. And the requirement in today's digital world is that solutions simply must be delivered faster. And this has led for a specific change in Agile. And we start implementing the Agile model. So the Agile model allows programmers to create prototypes and get those prototypes to the client with the requirements faster. And the client is able to then send the requirements back to the programmer with feedback. This allows us to create what we call a feedback loop where we're able to get information to the client and the client can get back to the development team much faster. Typically, when we're actually going through this process, we're looking at the engagement cycle being about two weeks. And so it's much faster than the traditional waterfall approach. And so we can look at each feedback loop as comprising of four key elements. We have the planning where we actually sit down 
with the client and understand what they're looking for. We then have coding and testing that is building out the code and the solution that is needed for the client. And then we review with the client the changes that have happened. But we do all this in a much tighter cycle that we call a sprint. And that typically a sprint will last for about two weeks. Some companies run sprints every week, some run every four weeks. It's up to you as a team to decide how long you want to actually run a sprint. But typically it's two weeks. And so every two weeks, the client is able to provide feedback into that loop. And so you were able to move quickly through iterations. And so if we get to the end of sprint two, and the client says, hey, you know what? We need to make a change. You can make those changes quickly and effectively for sprint three. What we have here is a breakdown of the ceremonies and the approach that you bring to Agile. So typically what will happen is that a product leader will build out a backlog of products and what we call a product backlog. And this will be just a whole bunch of different features and they may be small features or bug fixes all the way up to large features that may actually span over multiple sprints. But when you go through the sprint planning, you want to actually break out the work that you're doing. So the team has a mixture of small, medium and large solutions that they can actually implement successfully into their sprint plan. And then once you actually start running your sprint, again, it's a two week activity. You meet every single day to with the actual sprint team to ensure that everybody is staying on track. And if there's any blockers, that those blockers are being addressed effectively and immediately. The goal at the end of the two weeks is to have a deliverable product that you can put in front of the customer and the customer can then do a review. The key advantages you have of running a sprint with Agile is that the client requirements are better understood because the client is really integrated into the Scrum team. They're there all the time. And the product is delivered much faster than with a traditional waterfall model. You're delivering features at the end of each sprint versus waiting weeks, months, or in some cases, years for a waterfall project to be completed. However, there are also some distinct disadvantages. The product itself really doesn't get tested in a production environment. It's only being tested on the developer computers. And it's really hard when you're actually running Agile for the sprint team to actually build out a solution easily and effectively on their computers to mimic the production environment. And the developers and the operations team are running in separate silos. So you have your development team running their sprint and actually working to build out the features. But then when they're done at the end of their sprint and they want to do a release, they kind of fling it over the wall at the operations team. And then it's the operations team job to actually install the software and make sure that the environment is running in a stable fashion. That is really difficult to do when you have the two teams really not working together. So here we have is a breakdown of that process with the developers submitting their work to the operations team for deployment. And then the operations team may submit their work to the production servers, but what if there is an error? What if there was a setup configuration error with the developer's test environment that doesn't match the production environment? There may be a dependency that isn't there. There may be a link to an API that doesn't exist in production. And so you have these challenges that the operations team are constantly faced with. And their challenge is that they don't know how the code works. So this is where DevOps really comes in. And let's dig into how DevOps, which is developers and operators working together is the key for successful continuous delivery. So DevOps is as an evolution of the Agile model. The Agile model really is great for gathering requirements and for developing and testing out your solutions. And what we want to be able to do is kind of address that challenge and that gap between the ops team and the dev team. And so with DevOps, what we're doing is bringing together the operations team and the development team into a single team. And they are able to then work more seamlessly together because they are integrated to be able to build out solutions that are being tested in a production-like environment so that when we actually deploy, we know that the code itself will work. The operations team is then able to focus on what they're really good at, which is analyzing the production environment and being able to provide feedback to the developers on what is being successful. So we're able to make adjustments in our code that is based on data. 
So let's step through the different phases of a DevOps team. So typically you'll see that the DevOps team will actually have eight phases. Now this is somewhat similar to Agile and what I'd like to point out at time is that again, Agile and DevOps are very closely related, that Agile and DevOps are closely related delivery models that you can use. With DevOps, it's really just extending that model with the key phases that we have here. So let's step through each of these key phases. So the first phase is planning, and this is where we actually sit down with a business team and we go through and understand what their goals are. The second stage is, as you can imagine, and this is where it's all very similar to Agile, is that the coders actually start coding. But they typically, they'll start using tools such as Git, which is a distributed version control software. It makes it easier for developers to all be working on the same code base rather than bits of the code that is rather than them working on bits of the code that they are responsible for. So the goal with using tools such as Git is that each developer always has the current and latest version of the code. You then use tools such as Maven and Gradle as a way to consistently build out your environment. And then we also use tools to actually automate our testing. Now, what's interesting is when we use tools like Selenium and JUnit is that we're moving into a world where our testing is scripted, the same as our build environment and the same as using our Git environment. We can start scripting out these environments. And so we actually have scripted production environments that we're moving towards. Jenkins is the integration phase that we use for our tools. And another point here is that the tools that we're listing here, these are all open source tools. These are tools that any team can start using. We want to have tools that control and manage the deployment of code into the production environments. And then finally, tools such as Ansible and Chef will actually operate and manage those production environments so that when code comes to them, that that code is compliant with the production environment so that when the code is then deployed to the many different production servers, that the expected results of those servers, which is you want them to continue running, is received. And then finally, you monitor the entire environment. So you can actually zero in on spikes and issues that are relevant to either the code or changing consumer habits on the site. So let's step through some of those tools that we have in the DevOps environment. So here we have is a breakdown of the DevOps tools that we have. And again, one of the things I want to point out is that these tools are open source tools. There are also many other tools. This is just really a selection of some of the more popular tools that are being used. But it's quite likely that you're already using some of these tools today. You may already be using Jenkins. You may already be using Git. But some of the other tools really help you create a fully scriptable environment so that you can actually start scripting out your entire DevOps tool set. This really helps when it comes to speeding up your delivery because the more you can actually script out the work that you're doing, the more effective you can be at running automation against those scripts and the more effective you can be at having a consistent experience. So let's step through this DevOps process. So we go through and we have our continuous delivery, which is our plan, code, build, and test environment. So what happens if you want to make a release? Well, the first thing you want to do is send out your files to the build environment and you want to be able to test the code that you've been created. Because we're scripting everything in our code from the actual unit testing being done to the uh, all the way through to the production environment, because we're testing all of that, we can very quickly identify whether or not there are any defects within the code. If there are defects, we can send that code right back to the developer with a message saying what the defect is and the developer can then fix that with information that is real on the either the code or the production environment. If, however, your code passes the, the scripting tests, it can then be deployed. And once it's out to deployment, you can then start monitoring that environment. What this provides you is the opportunity to speed up your delivery. So you go from the waterfall model, which is weeks, months, or even years between releases, to agile, which is two weeks or four weeks, depending on your sprint cadence, to where you are today with DevOps, where you can actually be doing multiple releases every single day. 
So there are some significant advantages and there are companies out there that are really zeroing in on those advantages. If we take any one of these companies such as Google, Google any given day will actually process 50 to 100 new releases on their website through their DevOps teams. In fact, they have some great videos on YouTube that you can find out on how their DevOps teams work. Netflix is also a similar environment. Now, what's interesting with Netflix is that Netflix have really fully embraced DevOps within their development team. And so they have a DevOps team and Netflix is a completely digital company. So they have software on phones, on smart TVs, on computers and on websites. Interestingly, though, the DevOps team for Netflix is only 70 people. And when you consider that a third of all internet traffic on any given day is from Netflix, it's really a reflection on how effective DevOps can be when you can actually manage that entire business with just 70 people. So there are some key advantages that DevOps has. It's the actual time to create and deliver software is dramatically reduced, particularly compared to waterfall. Complexity of maintenance is also reduced because you're automating and scripting out your entire environment. Uh, you're improving the communication between all your teams. So teams don't feel like they're in separate silos, but that are actually working cohesively together and that there is continuous integration and continuous delivery so that your consumer, your customer is constantly being delighted. So we have six key takeaways that uh, hopefully that you learn from this presentation. We went through two delivery models, the waterfall and agile model, and waterfall is a, a legacy model that uh, is still very popular, but it, it has some restrictions in that the actual delivery can take weeks or months for the actual project. Agile is a modification of the waterfall model where we're actually reducing the actual activities down to a two or four week cadence. And DevOps looks at what the benefits are with Agile, but then integrates the actual operations team with the development team so that we're actually having this tight communication between the dev team and the ops team. So we have this DevOps operations. There are key phases that we have typically with DevOps, and some of those are reflected within Agile, and the others have been optimized, such as being able to script out your environments um, effectively for quick, continuous delivery. And then we have key tools that are open source tools that you can start using today. And then finally, the whole opportunity with DevOps is designed around speeding up your delivery and continuously delighting your customers. So hopefully this was of benefit to you today. If it was, please like and subscribe below, leave any comments and we'll get back to you. Thanks very much. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.